everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Rachel. <coughs> Hi, Hi. Hey, we're confusing everyone because it's Wednesday, not yeah. Thursday, and there's three of us. <laughs> <laughs> a terrible trio yeah. uh, what could possibly go wrong well we're doing mixed media rachel so i think where me and debbie are concerned everything could go wrong <laughs> we could end up with splatters everywhere anything's we possible could. we really could oh hi everyone lots of people hello. joining us hello everyone hi steph hi jill hi helen hi katie Great stuff. Well, we'll wait just a few more minutes for people to, to come and join us and then we're going to kick off. So a bit different this evening. There's three of us. So Rachel is on our DT and um, Rachel, you love a bit of mixed media. Absolutely do. Love it. Love a bit of messiness. A bit, bit of messiness. Painting, bit of sand, bit of all sorts of stuff. Yeah, absolutely love it. So you're going to um, talk us through and hopefully give us some top tips this yeah. evening and we're going to craft along with you um, and we're going to dabble a little bit in some mixed media ourselves so you can see lots more people joining us. So we've got the hour this evening <coughs> and um, as you can see Rachel, Debbie and I have all prepped different things but we're going to each talk through um some of the mixed media techniques that we like to use on scrapbook layouts or any mixed media projects and um hopefully in inspire you to to have a go so rachel i'm going to hand over to you and what i'll okay. do is i will make each person big on the screen so that people watching don't get kind of bamboozled with three of us on screen so yeah over to you okay thank you very much hello everyone um so this is my layout that i created first of all so it was using a lot of texture paste a lot of um dioxides there's a bit of lace there's flowers i'll show you the rust technique a little bit later and i just wanted something a little bit um i suppose rough and ready really it's a bit steampunk so there's cogs there's flowers there's shells there's all sorts of stuff um it feels very crunchy and it's a little bit crunchy it. but that's the texture paste so you must make sure that you gesso your back paper first so it doesn't absorb all the paint, inks and paints and everything so do you want me to show what i would like to be working on tonight if eh? yeah that'd be lovely and just before you um switch layout so that background um yeah. rachel that's um, so that's a like piece so, so the paper is from the toast collection yeah which yeah, and then two. you've mixed so paper two from toast, and then you've mixed mediated on top. Yeah. yeah, so I've used the distress oxide, yeah. and I've put it on one of those little mats, and you water it down, and you dab it all over, and then I've used um, texture paste. Ah, yeah, and I scrape yeah. that all over, and then I use the uh, I can't remember is it Dina Wakeley or is it the distress one? It's it's um, the Tim Holtz distress oxide pistachio. Oh, and I just I know, sprayed all that over and then dabbed it off with a wet wipe so it wasn't really thick and clunky because I didn't want it clunky in places. Yeah, nice. And so you didn't add anything to the texture paste other than those inks? No, nope, nope, it was just pure. If you stipple it, you get a better effect. If you just scrape it on with a scalpel, it's not very good. But if you use a nice little stipple brush yeah, and nice. you dab it on, and it's the same for the little rust technique as well, and I'll show that a little bit later. Um, you get a better effect and it, it is very scratchy as you can hear yeah I love it but it gives that sand effect so if you instead of doing it in blue and green you could do it in um, oranges and pale yellows and that will give you a lovely sand picture beautiful great yeah thank you love it so okay. what you're working on tonight and I can see you've got now you're just telling us about your desk covering I love um, it your top <laughs> my top tip so instead of ruining my dining room table i buy i go to the pound shop and i buy a pack of 10 puppy pads and as you can see they're very thick they soak up all the ink soak up all the paints and you can just put them in the bin afterwards so yeah love it i love go through it. them quite a bit i don't have a dog but i do have puppy pads <laughs> love so, it Great so idea. this is my cardstock which is from um let me just 
read it for you. It's from the Spectrum Sherbet and it's Painted Foundations Kaleidoscope. So what I've done already, let's put that away, um, I've put some clear gesso on it again because I'm going to be using paints and water and everything. I don't want it to warp the paper. So yeah, there's clear gesso. Katie asked that question on, on Facebook. So um, if you're using mixed media paper, like the Vicky Bootin yeah. paper, for example, would you recommending gessoing on that? I know no, not no, not for the main um, Vicky Bouton paper because that's already been coated. But if you're using ordinary scrapbook paper like the 49er market uh, or yeah. whoever, um, yeah, you just need to protect. But you don't have to um, put gesso on all of it. You just need to put gesso on the areas that you're going to be working on. Yeah, got it. Okay, so I've done all of this now. So now I want to do is I've got some <laughs> lace trim. Sorry, oh, bless you, you Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got this piece of, I don't know, rough looking. I don't even know where I got it from, to be honest. Um, rough string looking. Love that. Stuff. Um, and I'm also going to be using some mulberry paper. So when it's dry it looks like this it's very hard and very coarse um it's not cheap but when you spray a bit of water on it it becomes more malleable and you can pull it and you can get all the little strands out of it um and all the fibers and everything and it and it, it soaks up inks it soaks up paints it soaks up everything it, it's really really lovely stuff um i tend to use it on powertex using it with powertex which is really really good so i'm going to use a little piece of this um, but first of all, I'm going to stencil my background with some texture paste. So I've got this little one here, bear with me. Open the texture paste, find my scalpel. So you're just going to stent, so you're going to use yeah. texture paste through the stencil. <clears throat> just randomly through the stencil face, just like this. Move it down a little bit, put some more over here. Steph says, blast from the past, she remembers mulberry paper. <laughs> Is that like it's from school from school days? Because what were we talking about? We were talking about brushos. Oh, how God, yeah, we were, weren't we? And we used to use those it, uh, back in the day. So I've just added yeah. that. And now I'm going to add some circles. So just to give it a little bit of texture really right there with <coughs> Debbie how's your ear now my ear yeah oh it's okay I've, I've had it sorted today it's all done now good very brave very brave yeah in your birthday and anniversary week as well I know <laughs> I know it wasn't what, what pleasant. Did you want? <laughs> oh I know yeah. the gift that keeps on giving I it's, love it's it. done now and hopefully yeah well yeah. while you're doing that rachel i'm going to quickly exit yeah, out no and, problem. Um, and then um ask debbie to show a little bit of what you've been working on if that's all, all right, right yeah that's yeah, that's see you in a bit. Fine. so i have made a background it looks like i've done a lot and i haven't really um it it looks more busy than it is i've just gessoed um my background I have put a couple of strips of washi tape and I've used some ribbon. It's actually shiny like this. I've got some, I had some flowers and some leaves and a little border. So I stuck those on um, and then I've cut, die cut some foliage, flowers, leaves, stuck it all on where I wanted and just a very light coat of gesso over, white gesso I've used. So it tones the colours down a bit. And I've added some little bits, random bits of texture paste. Now, what I'm going to have a go at tonight is, I don't know if you've tried stamping on tissue paper. It's a really good Ooh, idea because yeah. it means you can stamp and you're not going to make any errors because you stamp on your tissue paper, cut it up, and then you can glue it on. So like I've tried... That glue it i've tried stamping with black i've got some blue um i've done some kind of texture bits that i could just glue on and then tone down with a bit of gesso and i've also stamped this is a lace stamp that i thought might be okay it might be too dark i don't know but you can 
you can try it and then glue it on if you like it if it's too dark you can always tone it down with a bit of gesso so that's what i'm doing love that you're doing Faye? love that right here we go let me yeah that stuff says very technical tonight it is <laughs> We're, we're, Sorry, all over the place. we're all over the place look i can do that so you can still see debbie and rachel working away in the in the background so um similar, I'm so, similar... i started watching i wasn't even working then i was just yeah. watching <laughs> rachel. so mine um this is probably about the third layer and it's by no means finished yet because i've i'm um, gonna add some more white paint and some inks you can see i've got my distress inks here so i plan to create a bit of a, a almost like a bit of a seascape because i'm going to layer up um here so if i show you how i've made this one i've got medina wakely washi tapes i've got some old lace i have some deli paper has anybody ever used oh love deli this paper thing. deli paper you can stamp mm -hmm. on that as well deb just like you said yes. with your yeah. um with your tissue paper it's more robust isn't it what yeah. i forgot to say was um when you stick on your tissue paper if you tear around the edges it will meld into the background better with a torn edge nice deb just asking can you put water on the edges so that it would tear better you can like, but yeah that's too technical for me tonight <laughs> <laughs> sorry I've just had my ears done, Rachel. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry, Dad. You, you've done a great <laughs> no, you're job. Right. I, I'm, I'm pleased this done now, but yeah. Yeah, I have to, the thing is with the water, though, I don't know whether, how quickly it would soak up and mess up the stamping. Because I know you can do it with rice paper. Yes, yeah. Let me let me try. Okay. And what, so, Let's have so an what, experiment. A bit like you've done, Deb, I'm building up layers. Yeah. Um, and um, it just kind of, I use um, this. In fact, I got a big pot of it for my birthday, which is the Dina Wakely gel medium, soft gel medium. I haven't gessoed my um, background because I've got the 300 GSM paper that we stock in the shop, which is really strong. Um, you can gesso if you want to, but I don't think you need to on this um, strong paper. And then I just tore bits, like bits of found stuff that I had. Layered it them does all work. Up. It does work, Rachel. Oh, does it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, really it does good, work. Isn't it? Yeah. And it, it just means when you glue it onto the background, it's going to uh, fade in rather than have a sharp yeah. cut edge. Yeah. I just think if you just put water around it with a paintbrush, it just makes yeah. it more of a. Yeah. Oh, fab. That's really good. Whereas to I know. spent ages tearing this one, you see. Sorry, I should have known. You should have spoken to you. I'd have known then. No, <laughs> top, top tip. Top tip. Right, I'm going to do my other circle now. Then I, love I think that. you've got to be quite quick, though. It dries quite quickly. Yeah, and the thing with this um, layering is you do need to let this really dry. So I did this bit, and then I let it dry overnight because if you're building up all these layers. You need to let it dry. This is a bit of a Dina Wakely style. She just tears all these little bits. So I thought we'd kick, create a, a horizontal and a vertical shape, and then you can just start to to build it build it up. So that's the kind of that's. And then I've actually got um, art stones. Has anybody seen these? I know you've got these, Rachel. Yeah, I'm going to be using them a little bit later. As well. I had these for my. Um, birthday last year art stones they are a nightmare to stick though they are a bit of a nightmare to stick on but i did manage to stick them on and let them dry overnight so i was trying to create a bit of a c oh that's sea lovely effect. bit of oh, a wow. effect, love that say so right that's me so rachel we're going to come back over to you okay so what i've done is through two stencils a little crossbar one here and a circle stencil i've put some texture paint <coughs> and then what i'm doing now with my little dabber i'm just i don't want to use a paintbrush because that will give it a smooth effect whereas i want a more random effect 
So I've mixed my paint, it's just gesso and ordinary acrylic paint just to make it light. And I'm just going over my little areas to try and highlight where I've got some texture. And, and I'm what, leaving what, this space here, so that's where my photographs are going to be. And what paint did you go with on, on there? So um, I've I've used the Dina Wakeley medium uh, media acrylic paint. Yes. Um, which is really good. So I've used I've apricot, uh, sand, apricot and sky. And actually and, we're about to start stocking. We've been... Uh, We've oh, been fab. looking at those, Deb, haven't we? Because the, yes. they're just in these little bottles, aren't they? So for crops, they're... So they're like this. Yeah. They look like this. Yeah. Like this. <clears throat> yeah, them. that's right. That's the same ones I've got. Yeah, like that. That's it. Lovely. Love them. Unfortunately, we did have a bit of an accident tonight at home. I'll just let you all know that I couldn't get the blue open. So I said to Colin, could you kindly open it for me? And then it oh, exploded no. and it all went down the back of my dress. So I've had to change <gasps> it tonight. Oh, no. <laughs> Is it ruined? No, we've managed to wash it out, luckily enough. Oh, dear. <laughs> but it was everywhere. It was in the back of my hair, back of my dress. <laughs> oh, I like, hi, Alison. I don't I need this tonight. Dreaming. Oh, is anybody else crafting along? Anybody working on? We scared them all, Faye. Not, maybe not mixed media. It's a bit. <laughs> unless, I think we we must be mad on a live, but we were like, let's just let's just go for it. There's no mistake when it comes to art, is there? It's all a design opportunity. Absolutely. That's what you've got to embrace, isn't it? So I'm going yeah. to just set that aside because you do need to just let all these layers dry. I'm just going to dry mine quick. One. Go back to. So, Deb, tell us what you're doing there. You're kind of cutting out the. Yeah, I'm just cutting out a few bits, um, and then I'm going to try placing them on my layout and just gluing them down. And then, if they're too bright, then I'll tone them down. But I like Versafine for stamping um, on tissue because it's it gives you a really detailed finish. Yes, nice. You, do, you get all the detail in the stamps. I mean, that stitching one, if I'd stamped that in Distress Ink, you wouldn't have the lovely detail in it that you've got. Yeah, I love it. So you still add into your background, Faye? Yeah, I'm going for a bit of white because I actually dug out these Starlight paints. This oh, yeah. one is Metallic Blue Aqua. But it's like very shiny and I want to dull it down just with my, so I've got trusty white acrylic. I get through masses of this stuff because if in doubt, just add a bit of white acrylic. Yeah, if you don't like it, you just cover it over, don't you? Or if you want to tone it down. But I just want a little bit of white. I don't, I'm just dusting the white because I don't want to cover up too much, but yes. Oh, Katie's doing some crafting with us. I have been crafting the last two nights. So I crafted along with Morag, which was fantastic. Oh, let me just... Um, oh, that was amazing. Love oh, that. I will... Um, I'll show you on a bit of a close-up. Oh, sorry, everybody. Look, I'm switching around and confusing everybody. Let me show you here. <clears throat> so if you haven't had a chance to catch Morag's live... It's pinned to the top of the group and she showed us how to do watercolour um, leaves and flowers, like tropical leaves and flowers. And also this inky stamped background and I loved it. It was two hours of heaven. So if you haven't had a chance to watch back, definitely go and check that out because it was brilliant. <clears throat> and I think, Katie, you were crafting along with more egg as well on Monday and then last night was crafting along with um the lovely Denise so I've had three nights on the trot it's amazing so what is else is everybody up to so Steph is cutting some scrap papers <clears throat> oh I'm going in for sticking my stitching down now Love that. Sarah's just finished challenge one. The albums are filling up. It's amazing. Oh, there's some fantastic layouts. It's great, isn't it? I love just seeing what everybody does and their take on it. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's brilliant. It's fab. 
challenges are open till mid-September, so there is plenty of time to take part. Right, that's my paint added. I think that's enough for the paint. Oh, getting in the right mess. I've got paints and stuff and all sorts <laughs> there. That's right, how it's meant to be, Faye. It's a right mess, isn't it? I'm going to come back to you because I can see you're doing something exciting with a bit of rust. I am. Okay, so this is, let me just show you what it would look like when it was whole. So this is one of the Scrapaholics um, chipboard elements. I think it's called the B frame set. So don't worry about the B because we're not going to see it because you're going to, oh, look at my hands. You're going to cover them um, with flowers and everything. So this is what I made earlier. So I'm just going to show, and this is the coffee stirrer to make it look a bit rustic. So I was just going to show you, quickly show you the technique. So what I do is I use the texture paste, the paintbrush, and I just stick it all on, dab it all on, really random. And then I'll quickly do this. The reason I've prepped them is because it takes quite a while to dry. And as I said yes. earlier, the sand stuff is a nightmare, but it is worth it. So in here, I've got um, some very, very fine art stones. So you can get the big art stones, which I think, Faye, you've used, haven't you? Yes. So these ones are, yeah, like the medium ones. And then there's really yeah. chunky ones. Yeah. So these are the extra, really, really fine ones that I've just put in here. So what I tend to do put the texture paste on, plop it in, press it, and hopefully ah, nice. it should pick all the stones up. So let's just have a look. So now it's covered. And you just let, what I did do um, last week, I covered it in hairspray and that fixed it quicker. Okay, that's good. So then that is basically going to give you your base once it's dry to then yeah. start rusting. Yeah. So if you wanted to, what you could do is mix some texture paste or some gesso with rock salt or sand, mix that together prior and then just stipple it onto a stirrer or in, onto any of the chip pieces. Love it. So let me just, this is the coffee stirrer. Prop it in. Oh, I love and that. And if you can, Carol's, you Carol's want to get... the lives. I'm <laughs> sorry, can, I'm reading the comments. you want to try and get the gnarly bits. Yeah, you want all those little gnarly bits yeah. to catch so that they catch the rust. Yep. Yeah. So these are the cogs, and you've got the cogs in the shop, haven't you? Um, uh, yes, and the bees. We've got the. You've got the, the bees, yeah, absolutely. Scrub, uh, scrub, I tell scrub, you what, also a really, really nice that you can use. Are these? Oh, the flourishes, yeah. Yeah, if you cut them in half, they're amazing. So that's the vine flourish frame. Um, I've also got the ivy one as well, which that's absolutely stunning too. So again, you're just covering it in gesso or texture paste, dropping it in. And then it's all covered. Fabulous. And it's as simple as that. So it gives it that weathered look, really, which is what we Great want. stuff. Excellent. Thanks, Rachel. Welcome. Right. Debbie, you, yours is progressed oh, a little bit. I'm, I'm not sure about the lace. It's looking <laughs> a bit wrinkled. It looks Actually, good from where yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, but can you see it's wrinkled just here? It might be better when it's dried, and I'm going to gesso it down. I'm going to tone it down a bit. And I stuck this ring, of, and I'm stitching a few, sticking a few little bits of this texture, but it's too bright, so I'm going to have to tone it down after. I'm doing a little bit of stamping, but um, I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it. You know, when you like, you need to know when to stop. Um, and I might, once it's dried out, go and put a bit more ink on. But I'm going to start assembling mine. I've got some ideas of how this is going to build up. Steph says she's been looking at the song title album and you get songs <laughs> stuck in oh, your yeah, head. Oh, yeah, earworm. 
Absolutely. It's harvest songs at school. Those are the words. Uh, do you know, my, I can remember when my son started reception, bless me, he's 27 now, and I can still remember that song that used to sing, it's another Harvest Festival, and it still is an earworm. Oh, and I'm the like, Mamba. Oh, my yeah. God. Yes. Oh, dear. Don't. Oh. Isn't yeah. it Cauliflower's Fluffy is the one yes. that gets stuck in yeah. my head? <laughs> That's, yeah. I'm still doing the rounds, Cauliflower's Absolutely. Fluffy. Yeah. So when you when you're talking gesso in pages, because we've got sort of the clear um, gesso, yeah. I've had white gesso before, but I'm a bit of a convert to the clear gesso now because it's almost in, it, well, it's invisible, isn't it? Whereas the white gesso, it leaves that it leaves that like PVA film over it. Whereas if you have the clear one, especially it it depends. If you're using a white um, twelve by twelve background that's fine just put white gesso on it but and also for canvases but if you're using it on a already prepared background like this one for example you don't want to have that white effect because you want to bring the colors through yeah and and you'll end up covering all that lovely uh paper up so yeah i found it, though that the yeah. gesso on my card i just said the background it's a little bit off white so it doesn't look as white it's gone a real off white which, you know, if you're bothered about that, yeah. I think clear would have been. Clear would have been a better, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I must admit, on this, so the, the paper Debbie and I are using is the um, 300 GSM, really thick but smooth white card stock. And right. it holds, it holds media. I mean, that's got layers and layers, and that isn't even warped. And um, I just think a good quality cardstock, if you're going to do, obviously you've got the Vicky Booten paper, but that's a little bit more expensive per, yes. per page. Um, and I know even Vicky Booten gessos some of hers if she's got certain mediums that she doesn't want to sort of slip and slide around. It's just all in the experiment, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's just nice to try different things, isn't it? Yeah, I don't do mixed media that often, but when I do it, it's nice to... When we do it, we push the boat out, don't we, Kay? <laughs> we don't we push the boat out. This is a little bit tacky now, but I think we might be okay. We might give this a little bit of a blast with the heat gun. I don't want to get sticky paint everywhere. So you've got those little frames, Rachel. Those are the stitched frames, aren't they? They're 49 Yeah, they're from 49 and Market. You know I like a bit of 49 and Market and I like a bit of flour. Who doesn't like a bit of 49 and Market? I, I am a bit gorgeous. obsessed, I think. Yeah, love it. Um, Katie asked a good question. What texture paste do you use? So... Um, yeah, a big tub is definitely a, the way forward. You seem to be getting through loads. Um, what what do you use? The the Tim Holtz texture base. You've got De La Rowney. I use De La Rowney because it comes in a great big massive pot like this. This and is it quite, lasts for ages. Mine isn't quite as big as yours. This is... Oh, that's um, what I've got. Same. And it's high density modelling paste, so it's super yeah. thick. It does give quite a raised... Edge and mine is quite um, mine's not thick at all. Mine's I'd say quite runny and it's given quite a high um, quite a textured look. High texture, yeah. And then the other one that I also have got, which I love, Deco Art, but this is crackle paste. So oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was going to use that tonight, but I didn't get round to sorting my stuff out, unfortunately. That's a good one because if you want to get inks in there and a really distressed background, that's quite fun to work with, I must admit. But it's kind of like trying to know. And the thing is, sometimes you don't want too big pots because they do, if you're opening and closing them a lot, they dry out a bit, don't they? So Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, I mean, like white acrylic, you need to make sure that that, that is a jumbo tub. And I like the fact that it's got a big, uns rather than a squeezy tube, you can, and I often just work in the lid. So I just, I, I obviously make sure that I, that's clean. But I just scoop bits out of there and that you have to keep it closed. Otherwise it's going to dry but out. But they also do, um, I, I haven't got it with me on my desk, but they, oh, have I? Yeah, they do um, a text textual sand paste. 
So instead of dipping this into the sand um, pebbles, oh, yes. we have that on order. That will be coming in it's, very soon. It, it's really, I mean, it's a bit, mine's a bit glunky, unfortunately. Um, but it's really, really good. So you just scoop some of that out and then you stipple it and it gives you the same effect as the sandstones. So Love that's it. what I did on this one here. And we've got a bit of bit of that coming in. So we've got some more mixed media products oh, coming in. And one of them is the Finnabar texture sand paste. Oh, and great. also little sort of glass beads because then you can mix that with your clear gesso and you have little glass yep. beads bit of a shimmer and these are a lovely thing as well from finnabur they're the um set of three rust paints oh yes they're nice so once these have dried what i did with these is then i sprayed some of the um stress spray on them and then i just did a little tiny coat of the sand the rust and that's a good way of opening it just like peel the little it's size a tiny up. little yeah so, so you're it not doesn't dry exposing out. it all to the air yeah um, Katie, this one is called PBO, P E B E O, Studio Acrylics, and it's a high density modeling paste. I will open this, and it's been quite well used. As I say, look, there's not there's not an awful lot left, but that it doesn't dry out. It's a it's a yeah, it's really, a really good one, really good one, probably from a well known online store possibly if you, if you know a bit what like I mean. the coffee stir is from a well-known coffee shop coffee shop <laughs> yes i'm feeling like i need a bit of color in mine now yes well, what are you going to do with it bit of ink no yeah but i'm i'm a little bit i know I, it looks so lovely and i've put the shiny paint on and if i were to do this again i think i would just do distressing so you see the shine on it which, oh, that looks nice. It's nice. It's like, but maybe oh, I might. Lovely. Yeah, I kind of feel I might need a bit of ink. I've lost my water now. So, who's going to be dabbling in a bit of mixed media? Anybody who's watching, are you going to? Well, I hope we've inspired people it's like to pushes you out. It's, it's not scary, honestly. Definitely I love it. Your comfort zone. Really, what you need to do is everybody needs to have a go on a jelly plate and then they'll learn that you yeah. never get the same thing twice. And it's oh, I just love, I do everything's, love. Uh, we're going to have to do jelly plate, aren't we? I love a bit of jelly plating, absolutely. I'm just going to come in with a little bit of oxides here. <clears throat> And I'm going to have to wash this brush afterwards because it's picking up a bit of the paint. Ah, oh, that don't work when you've got texture paste on. I just need to get some plastic. Oh, the distress oxides come up quite nicely on these uh, little. Mm. Art stones they pick up the art stone color nicely and that lace you can barely see now you've just got a slight texture of it love it I love it. Yeah, all the muted tone stuff. You're like, whoa, it's all I've I've tried to go ocean blue, but I know what you mean. But I am gonna be adding some nice bright die cut flowers. I'm with well, I've, you. I've got some hairy string here. This, this probably <laughs> there's probably a better name for it, but to me it's You're not saying string. it to me, Rachel. <laughs> Am I not? Hairy Sorry, Debbie. So what term. I want to do is make a couple of knots so it gives it look, that bit of beach feel. Nice. Okay. Steph, do you have lots of mixed media? I know you've got inks and things, but I don't know if you've done if it's your kind of thing. I know what you mean. It's uh 
definitely out of the comfort zone. And especially if, like, Debbie, you don't like lots of layers or anything. Yeah, Debbie doesn't like dimension. So <laughs> I don't like dimension in my scrapbook albums, but I'm happy to do it on a canvas. Yeah. Perhaps we'll get you to I, do I a canvas find, then. I will find the layout that's traumatised me against 3D. <laughs> I will find it for you. I tried to find it earlier and I didn't have enough time. It is, uh, yeah, it's traumatised you. Yeah, absolutely traumatised. It's it's just how it ruined the uh, the layouts on either side as well. Although I was looking through them and thinking, oh, I think I'd like to do some of my layouts again. I'm I mean, it's interesting, isn't it, oh. when you look back at your first layouts and you think, oh, my God. These aren't really even first that? ones, but there's quite a few I'd like to do again. Really? Yeah. yeah. But I think when we've talked on the live before, everybody said you should definitely just keep them and look. It's like yeah. embrace the the site, the sort of the level. I just think with the papers that I've got now, it would be even more intricate, and I'd enjoy looking at it even more. Yeah. If, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And it's lovely seeing how much you've learned as well i mean oh my goodness yeah and how styles have changed and how paper designs have changed <laughs> yes oh yes some of the old basic gray and oh gosh i've still got all of those in bags not even opened how sad really? is that really yeah you untouched yeah i, I think that yeah them. Um, yeah, they're probably antiques, definitely. <laughs> Maybe it, I think at the end, no, no reference to our ages, definitely <laughs> right. not. Just how long scrapbooking products has been around for. I think at the end we should definitely take a, a photo of our desk and show how messy it is. No. I won't, I won't tidy up and I'll take a photo. It's... um. Well, my desk is bad enough, but the table behind me is carnage. I'm it's too ashamed to show you that. Carnage. Absolute carnage. And I've just popped my brushes into a quick <coughs> um, jar of water because some of that um, paste and, and gel medium, I don't want to damage the brush. I just put mine into the rest of the dregs of your cup of tea and hope it will take it. No. <laughs> Yes, I have. There are I know, you now, um, haven't I? Vicky Booten has done that before, like not even on purpose, and realised that uh, she's washed her brushes in her in a drink. Funny. Right, I'm going to do a little bit of stenciling. I think. I'm trying to layer all these. These are a little die cut. And I've just used up scraps, but then I've also got some of these little leaves, these sort of tropical leaves I wanted to add. But I'm thinking they're going to need a bit of uncharted mariner edges. So paint them up a bit. I love the um that that string bit you added at the bottom, Rachel. Oh, this the knots. Yeah, love it. I'm just going to start building it all up now with flowers and shells and sequin beads and sand um, stones and stuff. I do find the mixed media process very relaxing, though I have to say. I love it. I absolutely love it. I prefer it to ordinary scrapbook layouts. Oh, thank you, Melanie. We're making a mess. We just said we have to take a photo of the desk <laughs> afterwards. No. Um, this this is this is how mine started. So this is washi tape, deli paper, bit of lace, bit of book paper. Um, Debbie, you've got lace, tissue paper, book paper die cuts. Yes. And Rachel, you've gone texture paste. Um, some inks and a rust technique. Yep, and a bits of string. And if you wanted to, where is it? 
you can always paint instead of having this texture here you can always paint an onion bag and cut oh, it up i love the onion i love the onion <laughs> bag top tip never throw anything away no we're all going to be looking at onion <laughs> bags in a different light now <laughs> and thinking i could paint it white to I Colin's like, oh my God, why are we keeping that? Because I can do something with it. Yeah, we're keeping that. That's got some very specific use. Right, I'm thinking the flowers are going to be a bit like this. I haven't stuck anything down yet. And I might do a little bit more stamping. Depends how I feel. Yeah, we've got lots of mess with gesso, <laughs> bit of gel medium, Melanie. What else did we do? And you've used um, sand, little sand pebbles and yeah. texture paste. So we are pushing the comfort zone. Well, this is Rachel's comfort zone and we are <laughs> embracing it and I'm loving it. It's when you do layouts, I'm like, I don't know if I can do that. I, I like a little bit of messiness in there. Yeah, <laughs> you do. But it's that is all part of the fun, definitely. What I also love doing, thinking of found materials. Let's see if I've got my bag. So um, we've shown these before, but Debbie, you've made these. And these are just oh, foam, yes. foam dominoes from yes. the pound oh, shop. Wow. And you've used your Tim Holtz dies to die cut and make your own wonderful stamps. Yeah. So they work really well. Another thing I collect is bottle tops. And yep, bottle I collect tops, those too. They are fab for stamping little black or white circles. And I'll probably go and add maybe. And another two. good thing. Let me see if I've got mine here. I love um, a few white circles. I might add some now just because I thought of it. These yeah. are really good. The Aida um, oh, for stitching. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the cross stitch material. Yeah. But like um, Lego's fabulous. And my fav one of my favourites is a credit card. Um, and if you um, use your cropper dial, and do a hole punch spaced equally and then even closer you can have some little false stitching oh wow Lovely. yeah a few little white circles there that's really quite nice so i'm just sticking some tiny little shells on now oh somebody's got a bottle top collection and a lego collection <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Use yes, it. Steph, that's Steph. I love it. Lego, that's great for stamping, actually. The best um, for tiny little circles, if anyone has pets, is the frontline flea lid. <laughs> that's the tiniest little circle. And oh, it's that's just good. I like perfect. This. this is the fry light lid. That's a really nice size. But also, another thing I use is just pen lids. Yeah. You know, like this. Yeah, this is from um, cotton, a cotton spool, and that's a nice little circle. Um, this is the best one. This is like the front the line one. Look at that. Oh, and it's got a little that. thing in the middle and then a perfect circle. It's so love cute. That. That's, that's why favorite. this acrylic lid is so handy, because you can just do this. Yeah. Get what you need. And just... Oh, it's very relaxing. I love it. You can also die cut. If you've got any die cut shapes, you can die cut into plastic. And then use that as a little stencil as well. Need a bag of found bits for mixed media, definitely. I've got a little, this is my little pencil case. And it's all ready to go. It's absolutely jam-packed. Yeah. Pencil. All different sizes of sequin waste die cuts i mean this is a cuttlebug die and i've used this so many times um that it's covered in paint now and it's kind of waterproof but it's got lovely irregular circles and a lovely edge that you can use as well 
love it and you know on more eggs live we were talking about mini brayers guess what i've just found in my drawer i will hang oh. that up on my pegboard look i've got a I actually That's went and bought, I must admit, after last night, I went and bought one and it oh, came to one. me. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah, so little bag of mixed media and this is like old sequin waste. That's great for stenciling through. Bubble wrap's good as well. Yes. Yeah, got a bit of bubble wrap in there. So all these lovely found things. I love that. I end up Numicon for stenciling through. Yes, <laughs> Oh, I'm thinking I need a little bit of cracked pistachio on the edges of these leaves. It needs to be slightly green because they're too yeah. blue. Let you know, I'm wondering if I need a little bit of cracked pistachio. I'm feeling like I need something else. Well, let me just have I got I bet I haven't got a brush for that. Look, I've got all my greens now, Deb. They're all labelled oh, up. Oh, well mm. done, you. No, I've got I don't know if I, I might just need to leave that and just put a photo here. I don't know if I add any more. It'll be too much. What do you You're think? You're going to go mad. Look, this was labelled black soot. And in my fun of mixed media, I've just used Uncharted Mariner on there. Whoops. <gasps> Sacrilege. What oh. do you think, or do I need to add some purple stenciling? Because I've got a little bit of lilac -y. Might go crush. I would probably put a little bit of lilac or purple in. Yeah, perhaps a little bit of stenciling here. Yeah. Hmm. What to do? What to do? Right, let's get crushed, Olive. I will get my right brush this time, I promise, Debbie. Look, I spent all this time labelling them up. <laughs> and there I am, just going in with black soot brush. <clears throat> ah, that's it. Nice little bit of green on the edge. It was looking a bit too blue. That's nice. slightly greeny all these lovely leaves that are going to tuck in these are just die cut yeah rachel we're going to come in for a bit of a close-up because uh many of these asking what are you adding with the tweezers and i'm loving oh, all okay. these bits <laughs> here we go you're that's it on big screen all right okay so these so it's a little bit of glue but these are the bigger art stones that i'm using um and obviously my fingers are too fat so i'm pulling them out with tweezers and putting them on i've also got some of these sequins um green stuff that i've put in here along with a little pearl so it just blends in all of that see oh, it's beautiful see. so effective looks amazing thank you oh we've gone to a different view Let's get a bit closer so people can see, otherwise it's too far out. And so, Deb, what are you working on there now? You're starting to build your I'm going to do a little bit of purpley stenciling. Because I've got this really lovely um, photo mount, or I might use it that way and just put the photo on top. I've gone kind of purpley with some of the foliage. So I'm thinking purpley, a bit of stenciling, do you think? Yeah. Just to add a bit of je ne sais quoi. But, and, but, and, and just to, and to keep some of that colour of the lovely background, you're thinking, not to cover it all up. Yeah. Yes. I want yes. to keep, like, all some that, white. All those different tones, yes. Yeah. You definitely don't want to lose that. I'm thinking it's going to need quite a bit of glue on here. When you've got quite a bit of texture, what do you stick down with, Rachel? Nuvo or I use the Nuvo or I use Mod Podge. Mod Podge, okay. Glossy accents are also a good. Yeah, they're also good, but it, it's, they're quite expensive, though, aren't they? Yeah, is glossy accents a bit more expensive than Mod Podge, or are they similar yeah. price? No, price it's a bit price. more expensive. Yeah. Okay, a Mod Podge does the similar job. Yeah, and it dries yeah. quicker. Aha! Top tip. Yes. Um, 
I'm on the assembly now. So I might do a tiny bit of texture stamping. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I added some stamping on mine, Deb. Oh, this was yeah. the other thing I die cut that I was going to lay on, but I don't know. <coughs> Needs it. Looks nice. Looks nice. Yeah, the stamp that I want is upstairs. Oh, I've got some lovely stamps here. If only we were crafting in person. I want me um. <laughs> What's the na lady's name? You know which ones I want, the tiny little texture ones. Um, is it script? Marlene. Is it Marlene? Oh, uh, I love her. Those. Yeah. Art you by want art by, art by Marlene. Yes. I and have got them. Kate Crane's ones are also fabulous. Yes. I had um, art by Marlene's advent calendar and it was amazing. <gasps> oh, was wow. It? It what came with you, you had lots you had lots of little dies, um, lots of stamps, and you had these beautiful tiny two by two inch paper pads. Oh uh, they oh, were just wow. lovely, really, really lovely. Oh, Steph does have Mod Podge, yay! Yay, Steph. <laughs> Love it. I am starting to stick down. I am committing to it. I'm just go for it, Faye. Going for it. Just do it. And I'm enjoying the process. More mixed media will be coming soon. <laughs> These little ones I actually had for my birthday from my sister, and they are, I got the packet, Tim Holtz. They must be fairly an older collection, but... Oh, butterflies. Can, yeah, transparent. And because I've got these film strips that are the, the sort of uh, acetate, I just love these little butterflies. You know what you could do with those, Faye? Get some black cotton and wrap it around the body and then stick it out so they've got antennae. So oh, it really? looks as if they're proper butterflies. Got a little wrap, wrap yeah. And yeah. Do you know another thing I've been eyeing up is like that wax thread because Morag was using some lovely wax thread. I've got um, some thread here, but it's too thick for this one, I think. Uh, I kept this blue out, but I just think it's too it's too thick. Not quite what how you want it. Mm -hmm. On the final assembly, I don't even know which photo to use now. <laughs> oh, Debbie, I know. Well, I got a lovely one of Simon Xiaomi, Aww. and I got a lovely one of my mum, and I've got lush photos of the Toblerone. So, I don't know. Oh, we all love the Toblerone, <laughs> so lovely. He's hilarious, isn't he? You met your little one, didn't they? They had a, they had a they little had a play little, date, didn't they? they? Had a little play date. So lovely. He was very good. And they had some lunch together. Aww. Yeah, wax, wax red, definitely easier to use, Steph. And I, I thought when more I wrapped that round the tags, it looks so fab. I've Can't got... you do it yourself by just rubbing through a bit of candle? Oh no. Life's <laughs> too short. I love how Debbie's always got a hack. <laughs> like, oh, I could make that. <laughs> yeah, but it's no different to doing the texture stones, is it? Just use a bit of rock salt or some sand or something. Well, that's why. I, yeah, exactly. There is always little hacks and ways round, cheaper ways to do it. I might not have a thing and I might just do a photo. Absolutely. What do you think? Does that photo go? Let's have a look. Oh, yes, because no. of the blues. Blues, that's what I was thinking. 
That's, That's great. him doing his exuberant blowing kisses. Oh, people. Which is lush. Oh. There it is. Where's my, where's my paper trimmer? Layering all these up. Haven't we been busy today? We have. We have been super productive. Which We're is fab. Final home straight. I'm determined to get this stuck down. I me. Because I don't want all the bits to move once I'm finished. <clears throat> right, do I need to mount that on something? A bit of blue. Or does it stand out enough? I would probably put it on a bit of blue cardstock. Yes, no. I would. I think mounting it would make it pop a little bit and make it really sort of do. sit on that layout. So do I do the sequins in a bottle or do I put a piece of paper as if it was message in a bottle? Depends or, what your message is. What's your message? I don't know. I haven't written one yet, Debbie. <laughs> Well, what do you I want mean, more? What do you want more to show? A message or? If it no. was me, I love a sparkle. I love a little sparkle. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think I prefer the little sparkles in a bottle. Yeah, and it's intriguing. It pulls your eye in. Yeah. Does that work? I think that's a, quite a good blue, wouldn't it? Nice. Oh, perfect blue, Deb. Right. Right. And phone my, dots. My don't little... say I don't do 3D. I love it. <laughs> I am adding my sun kiss title because that came in my fox box this week oh, I can't find the glue gun and i love the pieces that came this month they were lovely I, they? yeah i used well i used <laughs> the vitamin c on morag's layout and then i'm using this one sun kissed i'm gonna pop right there i've actually got some that was what I meant to ask. I've got some little acrylic alphabets. Now, if I could find them, that would be good. Here. So I was debating using these for a title, but obviously they won't show up on anything. And I don't want to back them with paper. So I was wondering, has anybody tried colouring them with alcohol inks or something? Oh, mm. I think that's I what think, I was wondering. I think alcohol inks would work. Or I was thinking like pro markers, like the al alcohol pens. Yeah. And that would work. I think so. I might try that then after. Obviously not now because I've got to go and find them first. I'm having to crush a few art pebbles to get this title to stick. Put a bit more glue on there. I think once the glue goes off, that will stick fine. Hold that on. And maybe I'm thinking just a few little Nouveau drops in the centre of these flowers. Nice. Oh, that would be nice. I think that would just be a Nouveau drop. drop. Can Got to have a few Nouveau drops. Right. Are you holding your pieces down, um, Rachel? And we can do maybe just a quick show in a minute to finish us. Can off. I just quickly show you how to spray the... Yes. Let me put right, you okay. on big green okay so this is why puppy pads are really really handy because yeah. they absorb all the ink so let's give the ink a good shake and then i'm just gonna it looks very orangey oh don't... yes but don't worry about that very orange so is that a distress oxide spray yes yeah, so this is called rusty hinge love it so but once it dries it will be a lot lighter and then uh oh, i haven't got it with me i use the dina wakeley oh is this it no it was the medieval one that i put on top which oh, gives yes. a bit more of a gray f uh, color to it but you I can also medieval. use yeah. nice. um cosmic shimmer rust paint oh yes and so Look. like neat micas and yeah absolutely so the combination of colors you're looking for sort of an orangey one yeah, aren't there deco art paints as well who can which can do that? I'm sure I've yeah. done a yes, wrestling with deco art paints. We've got them in the shop, and one of them is called Quinitone 
quinacridin gold or yeah, something? Yeah, Quina- yeah, yeah, yeah. I could never say it. Quinny never... gold, we say, don't we? Quinny gold. Quinny gold. Which is basically a rust type yeah. effect. So if you then put some of this goldy colour paint on top, it just brings out the sand a little bit. You have to dab it because otherwise your paintbrush will get covered in sandstone and that's an absolute nightmare. Ah. Fab. So you're just building that up. Yeah. And then when I did my other layer, what I did, it was a little bit dark. So I just got, I just dry brushed some white um, acrylic paint over it just to line it up a little bit. But that's the type of effect that you want to get. So it looks as if it's been in the sea for a long time. Yeah. Really effective. Very nice. Love it. So, and then, and then would you let that dry? Yeah, I would let it dry. Overnight? Overnight, yeah, because it yeah. gets quite tacky. So that's why I made some first, so I could show them tonight. And then I just thought I'd quickly show this t technique this evening. And as you can see, my paintbrush is getting quite clogged up already. Yes. Uh, it'd be all right. It's very it, effective. Because it's, it, it's picking up all those little... Um, stones because stones. they haven't quite dried, yeah. If I put yeah. hairspray on, it would have been better. Because the hairspray would have almost sort of given it a seal. It would have fixed it. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Okay. Oh, it's fascinating. Love it. Excellent. Right. And Debbie, do you want to share, you know, hold yours up so that people can see? Can see that? Yes. <gasps> wow. Oh, wow. That's lovely. You've added a little bit of ink, a little bit of stenciling, a yeah. bit of texture paste. Yeah. Love and it. a little bit of the Toblerone. Oh. <laughs> we all love a bit of Toblerone. <laughs> love that. And then my one, I am all done. Let you see the mess. Oh, that's lovely. Now. So can you see it's got a slight shimmer to it? Yeah, I like the shimmer. Um, I might go and add a few it. more bits to it, but yeah. They've all ended up really different, haven't they? Which is really lovely. You start off with a, th yeah. a thought. And it's lovely, isn't it, that they're all so different? Absolutely. Do you want me to show mine? Yes. yes. Let me do that, Rachel, so we can see. Oh, wow. Oh, that's lovely. So that's a sort of either in a, um, in a scrapbook album or a box frame. Yeah, or a canvas. Yeah, absolutely. Canvas on the on the yeah. wall. Wow, yeah. lovely, absolutely stunning. Wow, gosh, what that hour just it flew <laughs> by. Yeah, what it happened really yeah. quick actually. Oh well, thank you for joining us, Rachel. Lots of You're more than welcome techniques, and um, we'll have to have you back again soon to teach us more mixed media. I'd love fun. that. That would be brilliant. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you for joining us, everyone. Um, so we've got um, how many more days of challenges now? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So four yeah. more days of challenges. And we've got a challenge in the morning and in the afternoon. Tomorrow, we've got Kate Crane live at two o'clock on uh, oh, wow. Twilight Crop and Craft. So don't miss it. And um, her class looks amazing. So I'll be at work. So I will be watching back. But um yeah, do join her if you can, and it will be pinned to the group so you can watch back at any time. And um, and I think Steph, you're you're going live for us. I want to say Friday. Friday, I think. I'm sure. I haven't checked the timetable. And then we've got Anne on Saturday. So, lots more to come and uh, before the end of the week. Great. It's fabulous, hasn't it? It has been wonderful. Really thanks. good. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Loved everyone. It. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye.